So it is no secret that smartphones have been getting more and more powerful. And because of that, mobile gaming has not only become more popular, but mobile games have started becoming more and more demanding. And if you're looking for a mobile device that can absolutely crush any mobile game, then this is probably it. This is the Infinix GT20 Pro, a dual chip smartphone that boosts the visual and performance of even the most demanding mobile games, but then it's also just a great smartphone as well. So let's get into it. So firstly, let's start with what is in the box of the Infinix GT20 Pro, but to do that, let's start with what's in the gift box they sent. So Infinix sent over this PUBG Mobile Edition as the Infinix GT20 Pro is the official smartphone of the PUBG Mobile Super League, which is really cool. But then if we open it up, we are greeted with the Infinix GT20 Pro, a case with a middle clip to attach the included cooler to. Then we have the smartphone cooler that can be used to keep the internals nice and cool while gaming. Clip on triggers that can be used when gaming as well as well as finger sleeves. Now if we jump over to the actual box, I have to say that this was definitely a unique unboxing experience with the folding sides, but then on the inside you do get the Infinix GT20 Pro, a PUBG SIM ejector tool, a case to keep your phone protected, a screen protector, in earbuds, a 45 watt charging brick, and then you also get your USB cable with this angled bit at the end to make it more comfortable to use while gaming, which is actually really great. If we take a look at the design, the Infinix GT20 Pro definitely has a unique design, especially once you take a look at the back and the camera notch. So at the back you have this mecha design with this mecha loop lighting, which can be changed and used for a bunch of different features like notifications, incoming calls, and then used in gaming for different lighting effects when shooting and aiming down sights, for example. Then on the side, you do have this plastic casing, which honestly doesn't feel the best, but if you are like me, then this is probably going in the case anyway, which for me feels a lot better. And then when it comes to the camera notch design, I do think it fits really well with the theme of the phone. And I love that they actually made something different compared to what everyone else is doing. Plus this is also the section where you will see the color of the phone that you chose as well. So the Infinix GT20 Pro does come in three different colors, Mecha Blue, like the one I have, Mecha Silver, which is a bit more subtle, and then Mecha Orange, if you wanted something that pops a bit more. Then if we flip the phone around, we are greeted with a massive 6.8 inch bezel-less 144 Hertz full HD plus AMOLED display with a peak brightness of 1,300 nits and a touch sampling rate of 360 Hertz. Now what all of those numbers mean is that this device will not only look great while watching content on or for daily use, but it means that this device is definitely geared towards gamers. Using this device in more everyday tasks, the display looks great the colors look amazing and you have this really good blacks thanks to the OLED display. And then thanks to the really thin bezels, your content and games look really good without any distractions as you can really fill the entire display. Now the Infinix GT20 Pro also has sound by JBL. So while watching content and playing games, these speakers sound really nice, but you do have the included in-ears as well if you wanted to use those, or you can use Bluetooth headphones depending on your wants and needs. Now what I really loved about the Infinix GT20 Pro is the fact that it runs off Android 14 with their XOS 14 for GTOS on top. This means that you do have the standard Google Play Store to easily install all of your favorite games and you don't have to worry about installing games or apps via APKs, which I really enjoyed, but then they also advertise this as a clean and pure OS without bloatware. And what I can say is that I enjoyed the fact that they didn't install a bunch of different apps that I had to uninstall myself, which is usually the problem with smartphone these days. Then in terms of other features, navigating the settings and quick bars are fairly straightforward if you are used to Android devices and changing things like the display settings, wallpapers, and even the mecha loop is really simple by sliding down from the top and then selecting settings. When it comes to the cameras, the Infinix GT20 Pro comes equipped with a 108 megapixel Samsung HM6 sensor for the main camera with a bunch of different features inside the camera app, which just makes it great for taking pictures and videos in general, as you have the true and classic features like portrait mode as well as night mode for taking pictures in lower light settings. But then you also have a 32 megapixel front camera, which is also pretty amazing. 
In terms of video, you can record video in up to 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. So if you still wanna be able to use the Infinix GT20 Pro as a standard smartphone to capture memories with, or even content creation, then this is still a good choice for that. Now, since this is a very gaming focused device, you do also get a ton of gaming features and settings to really get the most out of your games. And there are a few ways to change these, but let's start with X Arena. So X Arena can be used to quickly launch any games that you have installed on your device. And it even shows you what settings are available for each game, as well as the target FPS that you will most likely reach. At the top, you also have some handy information like the temperature of the device, CPU and GPU usage, as well as RAM usage and signal strength, which is especially important in online games. But then you also have a bunch of different settings that you can change by simply clicking on the X Boost tab at the bottom. Now these are the settings of each game individually. So if you wanna change these settings like control sensitivity, GPU settings, these should be done per game as it isn't a global setting that you are changing. But then if you are in game already, you can also swipe this menu out and change the settings while on the fly. From within the menu, you can change the power settings from power saver all the way to performance mode. You can take screenshots, screen record, and even do a memory cleanup if needed. You also have a bunch of other settings like ultra frame rate, HDR graphics, changing the lighting effects, and so much more. But then you also have eSports mode to ensure that you have zero distractions while gaming, as this turns off all notifications, alarms, and even incoming calls, but it does give you a lot of performance enhancements like CPU and GPU optimization, frame rate stability, which for me is almost more important than having just a lot of frames every now and then, and then you also have network reliability, which once again is really important for online games. When it comes to internals and performance, you have 256 gigabytes of storage, which will allow for a lot of different apps and games, which is always great. You also have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which should last you the entire day with light to medium usage. But thanks to the 45 watt charging, you should be back at it again within no time. But you can also use the bypass mode to plug in your charging cable and power your games directly via the cable instead of the battery when you are playing games and you don't wanna drain your battery or you don't wanna put additional strain on it. But then the most important parts are the chips and the memory. So in terms of chipsets, this is a dual chipset smartphone with the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 Ultimate 4 nanometer 5G chip running most of the heavy lifting of everything. But then you also have a dedicated GPU chip, the Pixelworks X5 Turbo to ensure that no matter what game you play, it always look amazing plus get a ton of frames out of it, even when playing demanding games like Genshin Impact and PUBG Mobile, with a lot of titles being able to reach 120 frames per second. And once they have updated it shortly, it will also be the first gaming phone to reach a native 120 frames per second in PUBG. You also have 12 gigabyte plus 12 gigabyte expandable memory, which is great once again for those more demanding titles. And the amount of expandable memory can be set from within the setting menu if you go to my phone, RAM, and then set virtual RAM. And by default, it should be on six gigabyte, but you can turn that up all the way to 12 gigabyte if you wanna use the maximum 24 gigabyte that the phone can provide you. Then you also have a stable frame rate engine, which will help manage multiple resources to ensure that you are reaching your target FPS and getting smooth visuals at all times. Now they also have an AI VRS, which will analyze the games you are playing to then improve the perceived quality by rendering certain parts in higher quality compared to others, which will just help save resources and keep the device cooler. Now, honestly, from testing this device for the last couple of weeks, I've really been pleasantly surprised. It runs really smoothly on daily tasks. The display looks really nice. The battery life is really good. And as a device for everyday use, it works really well. Plus it runs Android, which is always great. But then once you actually start using it for games, it gets even better. It ran all the games that I tested really well with all of them getting high frame rates and feeling extremely smooth while remaining surprisingly cool, even under high loads. So if you are looking for a smartphone that is great for the day to day, but then also great for gaming, then the Infinix GT20 Pro is a great choice for you. And then until next time, cheers.